This week on the Wildlife Biology for Kids Club, you're going to learn about what pollination is, how it happens, and we're going to start learning about who does the pollinating. At the end, I'm going to challenge you to find pollination in action. Once you understand how pollination works, you are going to understand that it is truly a spectacular event that happens every day in the spring, summer, and fall here in the United States, right under our noses. Pollination is essential for our survival. As a species, we literally depend on it. In fact, approximately one third of the foods that we eat depend on pollination. Across the world, approximately a thousand species of plants need to be pollinated by animals in order for us to use their products, whether that is eating, drinking, taking medicine, wearing fibers, or adding spices to our meals. Some other things that you might not even realize come from plants, like nuts, chocolate, coffee. You might be wearing cotton, which comes from a plant. Even if you're eating animals, most of those animals are eating plants. Pickles is here to say hi. <laughs> If you remember my video talking about creating habitat in your yard and the food chain, it starts with first the sun and then the plants. So what is pollination? What is this miraculous thing that happens in plants? And how does it give us food? Before we go into the specifics of pollination, let's just take a step back. Just like animals, plants need to reproduce. That is, they need to create baby plants. And the way that some plants do this is through pollination. As you probably know, a lot of plants create seeds. When we think about gardening, we often think about putting seeds in the ground, whether that's flowers or vegetables. To create that seed, you need pollination. In order to make a seed, the pollen needs to go from the anthers and it needs to get to the stigma. But these are located in different parts of the flower. When the pollen reaches the stigma, a seed can then be produced. There's a couple of ways for this to happen. The first is through wind. We're getting a little bit of wind right now. Bursts of wind can cause the pollen to become loose and it can be dispersed through the air into another plant. What makes pollination so miraculous is that the pollen from one plant needs to be on the same species of another plant. It can't just be any plant. So much is left up to chance. Think about the chances of the pollen from one plant being picked up and then dropping precisely on another plant. The other way that we're gonna talk about a lot is through animals. Animals like insects, birds, and even mammals can pollinate plants. You learn in future weeks that some animals have incredibly special relationships to some plants. If you think about insects collecting nectar, they will get pollen on their body. Then when they visit another plant of the same species, they will deposit that pollen and therefore pollination can happen. I was lucky enough to be able to see pollination in action. In this video, you can see pollen clearly attaching to its legs. When this bee visits another flower of the same species, it then has a chance to deposit the pollen and pollinate that flower. That's how pollination happens. For some flowers, only some animals are able to access that pollen. And that means that there's mechanisms in place that almost make it like a lock and key. So when it comes to ensuring that pollination happens, we need to think about both the flowering plant and the specific pollinator that is making it happen. We can be thankful both to plants and the animals that pollinate them. If it wasn't for these plants and animals, we would not be able to survive. What I'm gonna challenge you to do this week is to explore your backyard or a nearby green space and see if you can find pollination in action. You're gonna find a flower just like this one here and see if you can find any pollinators in there. You might have to try a couple of different flowers out, but just watch Use your observational skills that you learned in the first video and see if you can see pollination in action.
To get the step-by-step -step activity guides, questions and worksheets that go along with this video, make sure to enroll in the Wildlife Biology for Kids Club. You'll get the chance to join a community of other parents who are excited to get their kids outdoors, connect with them and me, a real wildlife biologist. Once you start going outside, you're gonna find that your child is so curious about the natural world and that there is so much out there to discover.